Once again, welcome to Easy Elite English. Have free online learning, stress-free learning for school students. And this time we are having graphical representation of motion for class nine CBSE syllabus. Graphical representation of motion. Graphs often cause confusion for students and here we are with certain elementary concept which will make the entire concept of graph and graphical representation clear and unambiguous. <clears throat> so here we go with the motion and graphs for representing motion. Now in CBSC syllabus, in class 9, we have two distinct kinds of graph, distance time graph and velocity time graph, distance time graph and velocity time graph. <clears throat> Although the distance time graph <clears throat> with some modification could be displacement time graph and the velocity time graph could be with some modification speed time graph but in the CBSA syllabus it is distance time graph and velocity time graph and note that the time is along the x-axis in both the cases whether it is distance time or velocity time the time is along the x-axis the reason for this is that the time is a factor which will always move forward, it will never go back. Velocity can increase, velocity can decrease, again it can increase, again it can decrease, it can remain stationary, but time will never go back. From uh, 5 o'clock you will never get 3 o'clock, after 5 you will get 6 o'clock, after that you will get 7 o'clock. Hmm? Time will never come back. So time will be always on the x-axis and the distance or velocity will be on the y-axis. Now we have to know what is the meaning of slope. What is the meaning of slope? Slope means intercept on y-axis by intercept on x-axis. In this figure, intercept on y-axis that is OA and intercept on x-axis that is OB. Here also OA, the vertical divided by horizontal OB. So it is always vertical upon horizontal. So vertical always in the numerator, horizontal always in the denominator it means time will be always in the denominator and either the distance or the velocity in the numerator and always O may not be the starting point here we have the line starting from O here also we have the line starting from O but every time O may not be the starting point it may not always start from the origin let us see here see here the slope the intercept is AM not AO because it starts from M, it does not start from the origin. So the y-intercept will be M to A, M A or A M and not O A. So you will not be taking from o, uh, o because it doesn't start from the origin. You will take A to M. So that can be, how do you get uh, this uh, intercept? The full O A minus OM. The full OA minus this OM will give you the MA. Similarly here, vertical OA horizontal is not OB because it starts from M. It doesn't start from O. So you will take only MB. How do you get MB? The full OB minus this OM that would give you MB. So the starting point may not always be the origin. 
but we have to take the intercept not from the origin the intercept here m a and here m b <coughs> a rising line indicates an increasing value and a falling line indicates a decreasing value a rising line will always indicates an increasing value and a falling line will always indicate a decreasing value for instance here it is going up upward increasing velocity here it is coming down decreasing velocity why this is a rising line a positive slope so increasing value this is a falling line with a negative slope so it should be a decreasing velocity velocity is gradually decreasing here and velocity is gradually increasing here a horizontal line parallel to x axis indicates a constant value neither increase nor decrease this line it is neither increasing nor decreasing this line slope zero neither increasing nor decreasing here we say the slope is zero if it is a rising line we say the slope is positive if it's a falling line we say slope is negative but here the slope is zero horizontal line slope is zero so in this case slope means speed is zero because the body is at rest distance by time is speed so speed is zero means the body is not moving at all and here velocity by time is acceleration velocity upon time indicates acceleration so acceleration is zero means the velocity is constant so in distance time graph slope zero means slope zero means horizontal line in both the cases in distance time graph slope zero would mean the body is not moving at all speed is zero and in a velocity time graph it would mean the velocity is neither increasing nor decreasing means constant velocity or zero acceleration steep rise or fall means more rapid change and gentle rise or fall means more gradual change now here we have two lines car 2 and car 3 and you can see that car 2 the speed is faster car 2 is faster because it is a steep rise and this is a gentle rise and this is of course no rise and no fall so this car 1 is at rest the car 1 is not moving at all now when it is a straight line it means uniform uniform velocity and when it is a curve it means changing velocity non uniform velocity a curve indicates non uniform velocity and a straight line indicates uniform velocity let us understand the following there is a distance time graph the first one distance time graph first the body moves distance by time is speed slope is speed distance upon time the slope is speed so first we have the body is moving now horizontal slope zero speed zero means the body is at rest slope is zero that means speed is zero so the body is at rest and again the body starts moving here we have a positive speed here what we have in the second graph first of all we have now this is a velocity time graph so velocity upon time would be acceleration here we have uniform acceleration the body was moving faster and faster uniform acceleration here now note that body is not at rest velocity by time is acceleration so acceleration is zero means uniform velocity and here the velocity is decreasing negative acceleration negative acceleration until it comes to rest so we have acceleration then constant velocity and negative acceleration or deceleration also called retardation and here the horizontal part in the first graph the horizontal part would mean zero speed means the body is at rest here the horizontal part would mean 
that the body is moving with constant velocity. Here the speed is zero, here the acceleration is zero. Now let us understand, a graph is given. This is how we reason. First, what type of graph it is? It is distance time graph. See that it is a distance time graph. So here slope, slope would mean distance upon time that is speed. Distance is in meter, time is in seconds. So distance upon time would be speed, meter per second. Now for the line segment OA, we are taking only this OA segment. Straight line means uniform. Straight line means uniform. It is slanting upward rising line. That means speed is greater than zero. That means the body is moving. It is an upward moving line. So speed or slope is greater than zero. Now here we can see that the distance is 4 meter and till here the time is 5 seconds till here 5 seconds this is 5 seconds and here 4 meter so 4 upon 5 the speed would be 0 0.8 meter per second now for the line segment AB this horizontal line Horizontal line means slope is zero, speed is zero means the body is at rest. The body is not moving at all. Zero slope and slope is distance by time that is speed. So slope is zero means speed is zero that means the body is not moving at all. For how many seconds it, it did not move? Here it is five and here it is nine, right? So for four seconds the body did not move at all during this period from 5 second to 9 second for a duration of 4 second for a period of 4 seconds the body was at rest. Now understand this graph. What type of graph it is? It is velocity time graph not distance time. Slope means the vertical axis horizontal axis so velocity by time that is acceleration, velocity meter per second, time second, so meters per second divided by second would be meter per second squared. Now for the line segment CA, for the line segment CA it is a straight line means uniform acceleration, not uniform speed, uniform acceleration. Because velocity time graph, so velocity upon time would give you acceleration, uniform acceleration. Slanting upward, this line is C, going up, this line is going up. So it means positive acceleration, acceleration is greater than zero, positive acceleration. Now what is acceleration? The y axis is 15 meter, but the x-axis is not 5.5, it is between 5 and 6, so 5.5, but it is starting from 2, right? This line is starting from 2. So 5.5 minus 2 would be 3.5. So 15 meter, that is this vertical intercept, by this intercept between C and A, 5.5 minus 2, that is 3.5, so 15 upon 3.5. For line segment AB, horizontal line, zero slope. But here slope means acceleration, velocity upon time, acceleration. So horizontal line, zero slope, zero acceleration means uniform speed, uniform velocity, acceleration zero, uniform velocity. And for this one, B to D, that is from 8.5 seconds to uh, downwards that is 10 second this is a duration of 1.5 second this horizontal intercept 10 minus 8.5 and the vertical is 15 so 15 upon but this is downward it should be negative this was going up this line is coming down so negative so we take minus 15 minus 15 upon 
10 minus 8.5 would be 1.5. That would be minus 10 meter per second square negative acceleration or retardation. That's why we are getting minus 10 meter per second square. Now, this one is only for velocity time graph. Do not apply this concept, the area of the figure. Do not apply this concept, the area of figure to distance time graph. Only for velocity time graph. For distance time graph, you have only slope. Only slope. Y intercept divided by X intercept. Only for velocity time graph, you have slope which is acceleration, velocity by time acceleration. In addition to that, you also have the area of the figure. The area of the figure would be distance or displacement. So let us see. What is the area of this triangle 1? That is half base into height, right? Half base. So half base, this is 5.5. .5. So 5.5 .5 minus 2, 3.5. So half into 3.5 into 15, that is this one. Area of this rectangle, rectangle obviously length into breadth. So you are getting 5.5 to 8.5, that is 3 into 15, that is 45. And this triangle, triangle 3, this one 8.5 to 10, that would be 1.5 into 15 but there is a triangle so half into 1.5 into 15 that is 11.25 so the total distance would be 82.5 or more accurately the total displacement would be 82.5 area of trapezium you can also uh, we calculated part by part triangle rectangle triangle we can also calculate together Area of this trapezium, this trapezium, this one, this one, this one, this one, this is a trapezium. This one, this is a trapezium you are getting, right? This is a trapezium you are getting. This is a trapezium where the top and bottom are parallel. A, B and this bottom are parallel and the sides are not parallel. Half into sum of sides. Sum of sides would be this one plus this one. So, and into the vertical that would be 15. So half into the sum of parallel sides into uh, the height or altitude that is giving you 82.5 the same value it will give you. So you can do part by part first triangle then this rectangle then this triangle and add them or you can find the area of the trapezium as half of the sum of parallel sides the top AB and the bottom CD into the vertical height. In both the cases, you will get 82.5 meter. And that was Easy Elite English. Our free online stress-free learning will continue to bring you more videos. And if you need videos on any specific topic, you can either WhatsApp us or email us. So till we meet again, thank you and goodbye.